Welcome to my backlog, where I use a random number generator and my Steam controller to play through my backlog. This is The Force of Doom, a fighting fantasy game by Tin Man. If you don't know what Tin Man is, it's basically just a choose your own adventure book in video game format. They are mobile too, so. Um, there we go. Let's start with some basic stuff. Good sensitivity. Like a lot. Turbo friction in the window. Intensity off. Yeah, this looks good. Anything else? No? Okay. Um. Yeah, for gyro as well. Just because. Is everything decent? Density low. Well, and roll. Alright. So, let's get started. A little higher. Higher still, please. Okay. The Force of Doom is a fighting fantasy gamebook, an interactive adventure in which you are the hero! So basically it's a second person adventure game. Just, you know, take into consideration. You can only win by choosing the correct path, finding equipment, avoiding traps, and surviving combat. Before embarking on your adventure, you must determine your own strength and weaknesses with a series of dice rolls. You have in your possession a sword, some leather armor, and a backpack containing provisions, food and drink for the trip. You've been preparing for your quest by training yourself in swordplay and exercising vigorously to build up your stamina. You must first choose from one of three difficulty settings, blah blah blah. <clears throat> the easy mode is adventurer. Play the force to do exactly how Ian Livingston designed it. So very little has been changed from the printed version. So yes, I think there's an actual book version as well. I've never seen it. You know, I'm not really into books. Your standard stamina is calculated by rolling some die, or given a limit of bookmarks, which act like placing your fingers between the pages. Basically, bookmarks are cheating, but we'll get to that. If you have beaten the Force of Doom in Adventure Mode, or have read the printed form of this gamebook before, test your cards in Darwin Forge with the ultimate challenge. Your starting skill is calculated by rolling 1d6 plus 4, this making you weaker. You also start the adventure with no provisions. You still receive unlimited bookmarks. Free read. Play the first of Doom like an old school cheater. Free test set up the same as adventure mode, it's different in that it gives you three options to easily negotiate your way through the book. <clears throat> back button. You can move backwards to the previous page should you take the wrong direction. You can now back up and choose another path. Free choice button. You can unlock all the links, irrespective of whether they are available, so you can easily negotiate tricky parts of the story. The heal me button. Just use of Got it. Um. I don't know, Fury. It doesn't really matter. Let's go hardcore mode, hero can die. You have chosen hardcore hero in difficulty mode. Before continuing, you must calculate your limits. Your initial stamina. Your stamina score reflects your general constant. It's basically just health. Okay. You roll two dice and add 12 to the number world. This is then your stamina box in your adventure sheet. I don't have a sheet yet, but that's okay. Roll stamina 7, just 19. It's not bad. Skill by swordsmanship and general finding expertise as big as my damage output. One. Wow. Determine the luck. How naturally lucky a person you are. Luck and magic are facts of life and effects you can you're about to explore. Your standard is determined by rolling one die and adding six. Ten. Got it. Next, you must use a potion to take with you. A skill, a strength, and a fortune. These potions may be taken at any time during adventure except to degree when engaged in battle. Taking a measure of potion will restore skill, stamina, or luck. Scores to the initial level, and potion of fortune will add one point to your initial luck score before luck is restored. Each potion contains enough for one measure, so I'm really use wisely. Uh, that's kind of what the hell potion, I guess. You're an adventurer, a sword for hire. Okay, so before I continue, because I have a bunch of shit over here. Um, I'm gonna put 
I'm over here, I guess. Why is not Ornaldi working anymore? Funny game, very funny. You know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a configuration and I'll be back in some other time. Okay, I'm back and I hope it works. So basically I just moved a bunch of mouse options just everywhere. Just, uh, flipping the page with this one and uh, just clicking with the mouse. That's the right mouse in here. <coughs> Left mouse here again. Uh, escape ones, because why not? Um, sure. So let's give them a button. <laughs> Give me a bunch of tries. So this is uh, this is the button to get to the bottom of the screen. Get your map. Sure, nothing interesting. Um, let's get the adventure sheet, which is just the character sheet. Nothing really interesting right now. Uh, the options, menu, menu, blah blah blah. Um, I have this button which goes up here for bookmarks, and this one up here for the free mode. Just don't worry about that. Um, this one for the pages. Yep. This works just fine. You can also just do this, of course. Yeah, you can do swipe here, so this is really satisfying. Apparently there's no point in differentiating between left and right. Like last button, but whatever. Uh, let's see what we got. You are an adventurer. Well, need some source for that. A sword for hire, that's a mercenary. And have been roaming the northern borderlands of your kingdom. Having always spurned the dullness of village life, you now wander the lands in search of wealth and danger. Despite the long walks and rough outdoor life, you are content with your unknown destiny. The world holds no fears for you, as you are a skillful warrior. Again, source for that. Well practiced in the arts of slaying evil men and beasts with your trusty sword. Not once during the last ten days since entering the northern borderlands have you set your eyes upon another person. This does not worry you at all, as you are happy with your own company and enjoy the slow, sunny days hunting, eating, and sleeping. It is evening, and have feasted on a dinner of rabbit, spit roasted at an open fire. You settle down to sleep beneath your sheepskin blanket. There is a full moon and the light sparkles on the blade of your broadsword skewered into the ground by your side. That's how you get a dull blade. Don't do that. You gaze at it, wondering when you will next have to wipe your blood of some vile creature from your sharp edge. These are strange land inhabited by weird and loathsome beasts. Goblins, trolls, even dragons. As the flame of your campfire gently dies, you begin to drift asleep, and images of screaming green-faced trolls flicker through your mind. Suddenly, in the bushes to your left, you hear the loud crack of a twig breaking under a clumsy foot. You leap up and grab your sword from the ground. You stand motionless but alert, ready to pounce and run an adversary. Then you hear a groan, followed by the dull thud of a body falling to the ground. Is it a trap? So you walk over through the bush where the noise is coming from, and carefully pull back the branches. You look down and see a little old man with a great bushy beard, his face contorted with pain. You crouch down with the iron helmet covering his balding head, and notice two crossbow bolts protruding from the stomach of his plump, chainmail clad torso. Well, he's dead, at least he's got some armor now. <clears throat> Picking him up, you carry him over to the fire and stir the dying embers into life. After covering him with a sheepskin blanket, you manage to get the old man to drink a little water. Okay, so it's not that, that's okay. He coughs and moans, he sits up rigid eyes, staring fixedly ahead. He sits up rigid, eyes staring fixedly ahead, and starts to shout. I'll get them, I'll get them, don't you fear, Gillibrand. 
big leg is coming to bring you the hammer. Oh, yes, indeed I am. Oh, yes. The dwarf, whose name you presume to be big leg, is obviously delirious from a poison to bolt launched in his stomach. You watch as he slumped down against the ground. Then whisp whisper his name in his ear. His eyes stare unblinkingly at you as you can start to shout. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip the end. As I say, this is uh, a map. Yep. Sure is a map. <clears throat> now turn over. Come on, I wanna fight. Okay, this is a store. Fall up the stairs, yeah. Blitz is a little bit before. Uh, how much money do I have? I have 30. Uh, yeah, these are all looking so good. Ring of light, sure. Birds of leaping, that almost sounds good. Ropes of climbing. Supposed to be the other kind of rope, I guess. I'm gonna strength, yep. Uh huh, uh huh. Anti HD device. Uh, no splinters. <clears throat> Alright, let's see what that all does for me. Uh, go west. Alright, so this is where the map comes in, I suppose. Like, I am here. I can go east or west. Um, I can go east. Just as you're deciding which way to continue, I hear the good words, Good afternoon. One gold piece will buy my advice. Says the crew coming on you. Oh, that's cool. Sure. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it needs 30 gold pieces to pay as a troll mark to turn it back into a human again. Okay, well, north I go. Mm hmm Arguing voices. That sounds like trouble. Let's go fight. The owners of arguing voices. Two tall, spindly creatures appear clad in tattered cloth. And armor, I guess. Of which they wear chain mail jackets, huh? Doesn't really look like chain mail, no, but alright. They are hobgoblins. Alright, let's fight. Fight on. Uh, does my luck? Fight on. Oh man, I'm getting my ass kicked in around. Nope. Oh, apparently I wasn't looking. Whatever. Fight on. Next enemy, second hump goblin. Fight on with the second one. Ten. Going. Draw. Mm. Very lucky indeed. Our scales are matched. Excellent. You search through the pockets of the hog goblins and find three gold pieces, a tiny brass flute, and two maggot ridden biscuits, which will store one some age. Those are a necklace made of mouse skulls around one of the necks. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, eat. This? Sure, why not? To the left of the path, you notice a large hole in the ground with a diameter of some three meters. Walking over to the edge of the hole, you see it sloping off into the depths of the earth. Um, that, go on. At last, the trees begin to thin out and shafts of sunlight beam through the gaps on either side of the path. This path widens, you see a large cave entrance. Um, good. Walking along the path, you do not notice a rope noose hidden 
open you some phones ahead of you before it catches the noose. And the noose and suddenly you are hauled into the air by the rope, which is tied to a sprung tree. The second you are hung upside down. I am lucky. Your sword remains in the scabbard and you are able to use it to cut yourself down. You get to your feet and curse, parsing the dirt from your clothes with your hands. You are tempted to wait around to discover such a trap, but decide against this. Yeah, let's not do that. Mm -hmm. You notice a knotted vine hanging down to the ground from a tree on your left. You look up and see a roughly made tree house amid the branches. Sure, what could possibly go wrong in there? Tree house, alright. You reach the top of a vine and scramble onto a wooden platform, a sheet made from leaves and fern covers. The others are a small covered living area. As you approach, the sheet is thrown back from behind. It stops a large, hairy, ape like creature wearing only animal hide loincloth. Thank goodness for that. He's holding a large bone in his right hand and grunts at you. He's an ape man. Um. Fight? I guess. Sure. Oh, get shit on. He has a lot of skill, though. Like a lot, a lot of skill. Let's just go. Boom. Bye. I lose two, three stamina from falling to me. For <coughs> falling. I'm still alive. I guess. All right. Alive am I? Oh, I'm playing life. Soon the path leads out of the trees to a large plain with tall grasses. We only just see rising off the ground further on some low hills. The path splits and goes into three directions. They sure do. Let's go east. The path ends at a junction. The way south leads back to the forest, so down at sight to head back north. Mm-hmm. Yep, sure how to do that. As you walk along the path through the waist high grasses, you watch the grass rippling in the wind. Soon you get the uncomfortable feeling that the grass has a will of its own. It's moving independently of the wind. Suddenly a clump of grass stretches out across the path of Ripple's own. Like a tango weed. This is what you need plant control for. Otherwise you can uh just um take the hit. Mm-hmm. A centaur. Standing proudly in front of you is a magnificent white beast, half man, half horse. And the first white too. A bow and quiver of arrows are slung behind his back. He is a centaur. Sure, let's start the conversation. You bid the centaur good day, to which he replies in a similar manner. It is pleasing to meet someone who is not attacking the site. You ask the centaur if he has any information which might lead to your goal, but he does not know anything. Since he does not wonder too much, he says he is getting old. He just wants to own a little gold for his old age. He helps the queue across the river for three gold pieces. Yeah, sure. Hey, nice. Achievements. You climb onto the centaur's back and now, okay. I bear my blah, 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 lose money, and I'm back on the other side. You have been asleep for about an hour, and a terrifying howl wakes you up with a startle. A giant spider. I must fight. And apparently I will die. Mm hmm. And now I'm dead. Cool. Now what happens? You are dead. You have been defeated by the Dogwood Forest. The Forest of Doom. The end. Neat. Alright, well, at least I wrote a centaur. How many people can say that did that? So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, pick one of these up. Or go fun. A little tedious if you don't like reading, but. Yeah, they're good fun.